sometimes it's okay to think outside the box. What do you think of when you see that box? You might be thinking a battery box and uh, you, you'd probably be right, but I'm gonna think outside the box and we're gonna do something kind of neat. Not only have I taken that battery box and added a battery to it, but I've also added what I call the 4991, a 49 to one transformer for an NFED half wave antenna and a nine to one transformer for a random wire antenna. And I'm gonna show you what's inside of here, how I build this and we're gonna test to see how it works right now on Ham Radio, dude. Recently I made a video where I failed parks on the air activation because uh, I couldn't use my equipment. I failed to plan and bring all the right equipment and plan to fail essentially. This box was kind of started off as a battery box and then I started to realize the potential that this could be used for almost like a go box, if you will. And there's plans in the future to integrate all this into maybe a cooler that I found at Goodwill for like five bucks. It's a little bit bigger. And what that's gonna allow is it's gonna allow the nine to one to run into an antenna tuner, uh, an automatic antenna tuner actually, before coming out to here. So therefore, uh, if I'm using the nine to one random wire, meaning you know maybe you don't have a resonant frequency, uh, it'll automatically tune the antenna or match the antenna rather, before uh, coming out to my radio. So that will be a great, great idea because my 891 doesn't have a built-in tuner and that's my kind of go-to radio or my IC705 also for that matter. And then on the other side, the 49 to one, you know, we have binding posts here for the antenna counterpoise and then it goes into the SL239. Here it is, the 4991, as I call it, the 49 to one NFED and the nine to one random wire NFED. Uh, got a nice little decal on there as well as my call sign. But if you look at that, again, that's the 3D printed power pull adapter from thingiverse.com. It turned out pretty good. I'll post the link below. If you have a 3D printer, you could print one of those. The two banana connectors for the 49 to one, one for the antenna, one for the ground. And for the nine to one, one for the antenna, one for the ground. If we open this up inside here, basically what we're gonna see is, yeah, I fit my wire in here. So this is a portion of the random wire I was using for the nine to one. And this is the actual 49 to one, about 65 feet. Actually, it's about 63 feet. Together, somewhere around 100 feet. I think I've mentioned that before. And if we take a look inside here, we'll talk about this a little bit later. I go from a 16 amp hour Miati battery straight to that power pole connector on the outside. But this isn't good, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Other than that though, we have a 49 to one uh, transformer. This is a T240-43 toroid, should be capable of 100 watts. And then we have the T106-2, I believe is what it is. And uh, that's the nine to one transformer as well. The wiring job isn't the greatest, but I wasn't even sure this was gonna work. So that's kind of why we splotched it together for now. In the future, I'll be upgrading this box anyway. If I were to continue using this ammo box or this ammo can, whatever you wanna call it, I would probably 3D print a cover to go over this just to keep it neat. We're a couple days later now. Actually, it's about a week later. <laughs> Got kind of caught up with Hamvention, but I managed to get out here to the area where I could set things up and test things out. And I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> now, one of the things that I wanted to mention about the box itself is when we look inside, we're gonna notice the battery goes straight to the power pole uh, adapter that goes to the external portion of the battery box. And in between there, I want to add just a, like a fuse, an inline fuse. And the reason I wanna do that is quite simple. There is a potential that even if I double, triple, quadruple check it, or it's nighttime and I'm not seeing right, uh, I could possibly have the polarity reversed and I don't want to fry out a radio. So for safety precautions, I'm going to go ahead and add an inline fuse. If you do this, I would suggest that you do the same. The other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about was the nine to one and the 49 to one. Now I wasn't sure they were going to work out, but to my surprise, they seem to be working pretty well. And I'm going to show that to you here in just a second. For the, four, for the nine to one rather, I ended up taking my 49 to one NFED half wave wire, which is about 65 feet and I added a random length of wire onto it. I, I would probably say it's about 30, 35 feet. To my surprise, across the board, the standing wave ratio looks good. First things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the standing wave ratio. Um, and we have the antenna tuner off. So if I just hit standing wave ratio scan, what we're gonna see is we're starting around 6.9 and we're going up to about 7.9. 
and we're less than three to one across that band which is awesome and we even dipped down to somewhere around one point i probably four to one at seven dot we'll call it 300. so that's good on uh, 40 meters let's check the other bands and flat i mean it's less than two to one And look at that, 20 meters is like one to one across the band. You know what, look at that. <laughs> Amazing, right? All right, well it climbs a little bit there, but still definitely tunable by an any antenna tuner really. Yep, look at that, 12 meters is pretty good. And 10 meters, flat, look at that. Let's check out of curiosity. I don't think that this is gonna be good, but let's check uh, the voice portion of, yeah, I figured that was gonna be the case. It's above 10. So we probably won't be able to tune 80, but again, it's a random wire. If we added some wire, it might actually tune 80. Now you might notice one weird thing about the box over here, if you could see it. And that's, uh, yeah, I have my coax going in to the nine to one. I have my antenna wire out. And then on the ground, I'm using coax. I didn't bring a ground side for, or a counterpoise rather for the nine to one. I'm using coax for the nine to one counterpoise right now. I, I think it'll do in a pinch. Now the first contact I made was actually really remarkable. Hooked up the nine to one. I was running 100 watts with the FT891 and I heard Bud, W3FF. You might've heard of him. He, he's kind of the founder of Buddy Pull. Uh, I heard him in California, I got on and yeah, I was very weak. Uh, and it actually frustrated him a little bit, I think, but that was all on my end. Anyway, we made the contact. So my first contact on the nine to one, uh, randomly set up here was Bud. I mean, that's pretty good, California to Illinois. I copy the 5x5 five five and uh, you're about a 3x2, three 3x2 two, three two in Northern Illinois. <laughs> 73, good luck. Whiskey 9, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Uh, station ending, Foxtrot. Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. So I made a few contacts here with the nine to one. I wasn't using an antenna tuner. In fact, I went into the 891 direct. You could see that the standing wave ratio was like three to one, but that's without a tuner. This nine to one will tune pretty much anywhere up and down the band. And I did check 10 meters was completely resonant. I didn't need a tuner, so that was cool. Of course, again, it's gonna depend on your random wire length. Uh, if needed, I'll go measure my wire length at a later time. <laughs> Let's go ahead now, hook up the 49 to one, see about a couple of contacts. I'm not gonna go too far into it. This isn't a contact video. Actually, let me show you something here real quick. I wanna show you how I made this wire, or at least how I linked them together. So again, since I was out here in the field, I really didn't have the opportunity to solder everything together or add quick connect disconnects, which maybe I'll do in the future. Uh, but I tied both ends of the wire onto the swivel, and then I just twisted the wire together. So that worked out pretty well. Thanks again, Mike. The 49 to one NFED half wave did a pretty good job. Uh, in fact, it did the job that a 49 to one NFED half wave does. Uh, I had no problems with 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, 10 meters. It all worked fine, no tuner. And that was pretty beneficial. Uh, but, you know, it's nice to have other options, uh, the nine to one being one of the options. Let me show you some of the ideas I have for the future here real quick. We had already spoke about putting in an inline fuse inside of here, but I think in the future, this plastic is pretty strong. Uh, I might actually just take a, like a three A's connector or I might make it so I could put a ham stick on top of here. Uh, run a radial wire out and have a ham stick on here too. It makes the box more portable. Now the problem with that is, is if you're looking for a go box, where are you gonna put your ham stick? And in that theory, you'd have to have it on like the side of your backpack or something along those lines. Uh, but you know, I might just do that for, because I can. But a couple other things I wanna do 
inside of here, well, actually, we're going to upgrade one day to a cooler. I found a cooler at Goodwill for about five bucks. It's a little bit bigger. And when I do all of this inside, I'll actually put the built-in antenna tuner to the nine to one inside. So everything is in there and I don't have to worry about, did I grab the tuner? Basically working to make an all-in-one go box. With the cooler, I should be able to fit a smaller radio in there like the Zygu X6100, or I might actually even be able to fit the 891 in here. So the whole theory and concept is, is when I'm ready to go, I grab that box and I'm good to go. 16 amp hours, 49 to one, nine to one. The wire stays inside. This will really help me in the future. And hopefully it gave you a couple creative ideas on what you might be able to do on one of your next builds. I wanna know in the comments below, what do you think about this? Is having a nine to one random wire auto transformer and a 49 to one auto transformer in the same box kind of over redundant? What do you think about that hamstick idea? And finally, have you built a box like this and what did you put inside? Thanks for watching the channel. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Until next time, 73.